Yeah, welcome to my talk. Uh, Honey Eye Container S3 Operating System. Uh, so those of you who can't relate anything with the title, there was a movie in the, I think, 90s, um, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, with the uh, wonderful Rick Moranis. So if you haven't seen this movie, go see it. And that's uh, where this title comes from. I am Klaus Kempf. I'm a senior project manager uh, currently in the um, container uh, group, um, especially doing elemental uh, cube warden, which is um, a security policy framework, and Epinio, uh, which is a path re replacement. But today I will talk about um, what we do in the um, OS the space and how to make uh, an operating uh, operating system more Kubernetes-like, so to speak. So, um, yeah. In order to give you a better idea of what we are doing and why we are doing it, I will uh, do a brief explanation of cloud native, what it is, especially from an operating system perspective. And um, this poses a couple of challenges uh, in the market and also for um, our customers. And then I will uh, introduce Elemental and uh, a brief, show so, uh, briefly some technical aspects. And I hope we have time at the end for Q&A. Feel free to interrupt me if you have questions. Okay, so what is cloud native, especially if we look at it from an operating system perspective? Um, cloud native, that is, the short term is that it describes guidelines for applications and infrastructure to make best use of containers and especially Kubernetes. So as you can see, there are two parts on, uh, in this. The first is applications. And for applications, um, the guidelines which best describe uh, this is what's called the 12 factor app. So that's 12 rules how to construct an application so that it um, runs well containerized and especially runs well in. Um, the Kubernetes environment. I will not go through all these 12, but I will pick uh, the three that I think are most relevant for the operating system perspective. And the first uh, of this is that you should use declarative formats um, for setup automation. And that means that um, the source of truth is outside of the operating system because uh, what you have inside the operating system in slash etc or somewhere else is not declarative um, but you should have it in typically yaml format outside and this um, and you just inject this um, you convert it to the right format and inject it into the operating system um, the next thing is to have a clean contract with the underlying operating system. And that means the contract is between the application that is running in the container and the container is a process uh, running on the kernel that, um, it, that it's clear to the application what to expect from the kernel. And it's only the kernel, there's nothing else um, besides the kernel. So uh, any other tooling of the operating system is of no interest um, for, the, for the application. And that makes uh, applications portable because they know what, what to expect. And that means from an operating system, you just need a kernel because nothing else is of interest for applications. 
And then the third rule of interest is about deployment. And here, the second part, obviating the need for service and system administration. In the ideal case, you don't see the operating ever. You don't touch it. Uh, you don't do anything with it. And um, at the end of the day, that means your Linux admin skills aren't needed anymore because um, the operating system is um, not of interest for the Kubernetes and application layer. The other part of cloud native that is interesting for us um, in this context is infrastructure. And for the infrastructure um, part, I most like the pets versus cattle um, analogy. And I've, um, for your reference, uh, included here the link, uh, which has some uh, more nice analogies. But uh, this is um, what pets versus cattle is. I won't go through all of this. It's for your reference here. But what is interesting for us is that pets are given names like Grumpy Cat. They are unique, lovingly hand-raised and cared for. And when they get ill, you nurse them back to health. That means if the operating system doesn't behave, you log in, you look at log files, you start Yast, uh, you start a VI editor to edit config files, you restart services um, in order to get uh, your pet system behave again. For uh, Kubernetes and cloud native infrastructure, you don't care about a single node because it's like cattle. Cattle are given given numbers, not names, and they are almost identical to all the other cattle. And when they get ill, you replace them and get another. You basically shoot them and just buy a new cow. And that's similar in um, Kubernetes infrastructure, Kubernetes clusters. If a cluster node doesn't behave, you shut it down. Uh, Kubernetes will take care uh, that the services are moved to, to other nodes and you just redeploy from, from scratch. That's the simplest and easiest way. The next analogy is about how long it takes and what effort it is to set up infrastructure in order to deploy um, an application on um, Kubernetes. And it typically, with legacy infrastructure, it takes days and it's maintained for, for years, as we can see uh, with the current a lifetime of to the Linux enterprise, 13 to 15 years. That is because it's hard for customers to replace or change a setup once it is in place. Um, Cloud Foundry infrastructure just doesn't care because the infrastructure is instantiated, modified, and destroyed and recreated in minutes from scratch using automated scripts. Um, so if you need to, to redeploy, it's a push of a button. Um, it's one uh, script to run, and everything will get deployed and recreated as needed. And you typically don't touch these systems ever. Yeah. So this new cloud native world comes with a couple of challenges. And uh, I put it as a subtitle here, the road to sle ir irrelevance, other name it distroless. Uh, because the underlying distribution is not of interest anymore. Um, Laura, let's look at it from a customer perspective. Um, no, 
So first, uh, yeah, let's look at the typical stack. Uh, you should all know this picture. This is the standard uh, SUSE picture of how we think that um, a data center deployment um, should look like or a Linux deployment. And I want to point out this. There is SUSE manager and other Linux. That is the um, typical, I call it legacy infrastructure um, that is not matching the top level application stack, which runs here on Kubernetes SUSE Rancher. What does it mean for our customers and for um, for their um, people? So first, you have uh, a domain separation. You have the traditional teams who know how to install uh, Linux, how to deploy uh, SUSE Manager how to um, set up registry, how to manage RPM packages, and so on. And you have the other group that is cloud native, um, which pull down their applications from registry um, registries. Um, they only care about container images. and um, this is a challenge uh, for most customers how to yeah, bridge this, this gap. And this is especially true in times like these where most companies struggle for talent. Um, yeah, you need, if you have both, you need Linux experts and you need Kubernetes experts. You need people who are familiar with the Linux command line who can raise a system back to uh, to health, uh, who can edit uh, config files. And then you have uh, Kubernetes experts who mostly care about applications running on, on Kubernetes. They care about uh, Kubernetes behavior, load balancers, networking, and so on but um, they actually don't care much about the underlying operating system or the exact kernel that all this is, is running on. And then um, you also have an infrastructure challenge because traditional needs RPM re repositories um, and tools like SUSE Manager uh, versus um, on Kubernetes, you only take care for containers, container images hosted on, on registries. And if you look at what Rancher is currently um, targeting, that is everything is a container image. Um, I said I'm also project managing uh, Kubewarden. Kubewarden is a, a policy engine. Uh, where the engine itself and the policies are distributed as uh, OCI images um, via con container registries. Um, and that is Im important um, that everything is going um, this, this way, trying to make um, the infrastructure, uh, the surrounding infrastructure that you need around a Kubernetes deployment as simple as possible. Then if you look at the uh, 12 factor gu guidelines and cloud native approach, um, what you want to do for deployment is you don't want to edit notes, you want to re-image re uh, your systems as soon as uh, you have to change something, be it a change in configuration or a um, change in the, in the software stack. You want to have everything declarative. Um, that is a trend going on since years with tools like Puppet or Chef or Salt. Um, 
and you want to have everything automated. If you look at how clouds are deployed, the race of um, Terraform, um, that is all about automation deployment with the push of a, of a button and especially redeployment, uh, move from one cloud to, to, uh, to, to another. Uh, you don't want to want to take care. Then the configuration data. Uh, with cloud native, I said it before, the configuration data, the source of truth for configuration data is not the system uh, or a file in, in ATC. The, con the configuration data in Kubernetes is in the cluster. That is um, typically etcd, that is uh, a daemon that um, synchronizes uh, configuration data changes across nodes um, to make it um, robust and, and uh, fail safe. So if one node in the cluster um, has problems, the cluster as a whole is not affected. And um, Kubernetes, everything is um, a resource definition. Everything is expressed as YAML. And that is um, one of the main um, things that the Rancher UI or Rancher Manager uh, uh, provides you, that it puts all of this into um, a web UI and makes it easily accessible. Um, for for you. Um, then, yeah, you want to have painless updates. That is, again, my background is also in, in SUSE Manager. I was project managing or product owner for SUSE Manager uh, for for many years. And people were always complaining, oh, I need an, uh, another update. And we can only update once a year. And we need to shut down the um, all the the applications in order to move to the next service pack um, with, a, with a cluster that is workload aware, that knows which are the workloads are running there, um, updates are painless. Because if you want to update a node, you just move all your workloads uh, to, to, a, to another node. Uh, the, Load balancer redirects all uh, network connections to the new node. You can shut down the old node. Um, that is what Kubernetes uh, provides. And last is uh, you want to have it all sec secure. You don't want the workload directly on the OS. You don't deploy applications on the operating system. Um, you deploy the workloads in, in containers, and the container only needs a kernel uh, to run. So you can keep the OS layer as thin as possible. I see a lot of chat going on, but I hope... Um, you're not too shy to interrupt me for questions. OK, so what you want to have, given that everything is in Kubernetes and everything is a container image, is you want to have the operating system also as a container image. And you, have, you want to have it manageable as a Kubernetes resource. And that gives you a single administration interface that is ideally just rancher. Uh, people don't have to care for um, shell commands, for Yast, uh, for cockpit, or any tools like this. Um, you want to have a container-aware infrastructure. Because when everything is a container image, you only need a container image uh, registry and nothing else. Um, you, don't, you don't need a package re repository or anything like that. Um, all the 
or as life cycle tasks like deployment, management, updating of the operating system. You want to have it all accessible from Rancher Manager. And of course, you want something that at the end of the day runs everywhere. While with Elemental, we currently focus on bare metal and edge, uh, nothing prevents you uh, to deploy it on on the cloud in virtualized in environment um, or directly on a huge bare metal um, servers. So, and this brings me to Elemental, which is our um, current project to give all this to Ranger customers a Kubernetes manageable operating system. So what is Elemental? Elemental, first and foremost, is a generic toolkit for cloud native OS management. It is not uh, SUSE specific. It doesn't care at the end of the day about the underlying um, distribution. And uh, some people, um, even call it distro-less because um, it, has not, it, it is not dependent on any dis distribution-specific um, features. Um, so what are the characteristics of Elemental and an operating system um, with Elemental? we can build the operating system with a Docker file. Uh, and I have um, uh, linked here our current uh, project in, in OBS where we do just that. Uh, if you look closely at the Docker file, of course, it um, imports Slee Micro for Rancher, which is um, a set of packages in a, a container image file built by Kiwi, but uh, there is nothing that would prevent us doing everything um, in a in a Docker file. Um, Elemental brings the operating system and container images together, and that is the core aspect, the core marketing aspect of Elemental, that everything is a container image, and it really has a minimal Linux stack because it only relies on grub to boot. Um, the kernel drag code for init uh, RD and the initial setup and systemd. Of course, we have a couple of other things like bash or network manager to set up uh, net networking and, and, and other things. Um, but at the end of the uh, day, the application um, and Kubernetes only uh, need these four um, core packages in order to boot and run on bare metal. As I said before, it works with any Linux distribution. While we currently focus on um, Slim Micro for, for Rancher, uh, we could as well do it for OpenSUSE. Um, we have done it for F Fedora before. There's now um, um, a separate uh, project, um, Kairos, that uses Elemental um, and uh, builds uh, even more uh, on even uh, more dis distributions. And uh, one characteristic of Elemental is that. Um, we could use the OCI layers, so the layers of the container image, uh, to better sort them and like put the kernel on the topmost layer. Um, layering aspect of containers give us the possibility to, for example, put um, the kernel on the outmost layer because that is um, the piece that is changed uh, most often.
So what other properties do we get from an elemental operating system? Um, first of all, in, in mutability because we can make the root file system read only. Uh, we have um, an AB update scheme and automated recovery, which makes it very re reliable. Um, since everything is containerized and declarative, um, we consider it hardened. Uh, it's very manageable because everything in the US is a Kubernetes resource easily uh, accessible via, for example, the Rancher UI. And um, it's secure, uh, not only that it has a minimal attack vector, because there's almost nothing running on the operating system. Um, we are planning to uh, support sec secure boot. We will add SE Linux. Um, we have, uh, we have signed images already in uh, the GitHub releases that we do. Um, SLSA Salsa is, and Fido um, is about a secure device onboarding um, so that uh, you know that the hardware that is the, that you run on the edge is actually the hardware that should be running there and nobody has tampered with it. And what we will announce next week and introduce to our customers is what we call Elemental Teal. And that is the combination of um, the Elemental Toolkit, uh, as just described, with Slee Micro for Rancher. The Micro for Rancher is a minified set of packages taken from Slee Micro. And that is Basically, grub, kernel, record, system D, um, SE Linux, and a couple of other packages around in order to uh, configure and set up uh, networking and um, make the connection back to the management cluster on, on boot. And then uh, there's the elemental tooling, um, which is talking to the uh, management cluster and gets um, uh, commands and um, things to do. And uh, I will take a brief look under the hood now for uh, this conference because it is a technical conference. So first of all, of course, show me the code. Uh, we currently have um, four main um, GitHub repositories. And if you see a rancher slash, slash here, that means it is on GitHub under the rancher org. Um, that is uh, elemental. That is uh, the um, config files and scripts and YAML. Um, that are needed in order to instruct uh, Dracut and Grub and so on um, to behave co correctly. Then we have um, what we call the elemental client or command line interface. Um, that is uh, the one that knows how to download um, the elemental image uh, from a registry. It knows how to um, build an, an ISO out of it, and it knows how to um, handle updates, like um, pulling a new image and rebooting. Then we have the elemental operator, and the operator is the piece that is running on Kubernetes on the management cluster, and that is the one that translates um, Kubernetes resources uh, to something elemental can, can understand. Um, and uh, then there is the Rancher system um, agent. And this is even independent of um, 
of ele elemental that is a generic agent um, for for rancher that is used to um, yeah deploy the actual um, workloads um, or deploy the correct um, Kubernetes distribution. And this also has the nice property um, of being able to uh, download and run plans. Plans are um, container images that uh, contain additional um, tooling. Uh, so think of it like, uh, OK, you want to run um, um, a TCP dump or you want to deploy additional um, kernels, um, um, kernel modules, or um, a customer-specific spe um, OS layer monitoring agent. Um, this is all um, shielded from the operator's writing system inside plans. And that is um, a rancher uh, generic um, piece. Then uh, I'd like to show you the uh, typical uh, partition layout. Um, that is um, the partition layout that we are currently using, um, but it's not uh, set in stone. It's all con configurable. But a typical deployed system just has um, a grub uh, partition, and that is uh, um, the normal uh, forfeit partition uh, used for EFI boot. Uh, then we have an OEM uh, partition that contains all the cloud config data, so the uh, all the de declarative uh, configuration um, that is applied to the operating system is in cloud config style that it hosted in this partition. Then we have a state partition. That is the one that holds uh, the two images. That is an active image and a passive image for the ABAE uh, update scheme. And then um, just uh, to, to be um, safe, we have a separated recovery uh, partition that contains a, a, re a recovery image. Um, think of it uh, like the... Um, uh, base re repository of uh, SUSE Linux inter Enterprise uh, without any additional um, updates. And then uh, the largest one is the uh, persistent uh, partition okay. um, that uh, contains all the uh, workload data, so basically all the application um, container images um, that you need. And it also contains um, um, conf con configuration files. Um, for example, the system agent uh, records which plans it has run in um, directories um, stored pers persistently. But uh, all of this is um, um, of no interest in case of um, a failure. You just reinstall because all the data that is on this image is coming from Kubernetes re resources, and it can be uh, redeployed within minutes. And uh, last slide, a brief look at the update workflow. And the update workflow makes use of um, all the semantics that Kubernetes provides us. And it's Kubernetes that initiates and controls the update workflow. Um, so it has a couple of steps. First is that you cordon the node, and is uh, Kubernetes will not um, deploy new new workloads on this. Uh, then, uh, in parallel, um, it instructs um, 
Elemental to download um, the new OS image and to switch the active and passive um, images in the Grub configuration. Then uh, the node is uh, being e evacuated, that is, workloads are moved to other nodes um, and load balancers are uh, adapted. Um, and then a, a reboot happened with the new image and the node is available in the cluster again. Um, and this typically um, takes less than a minute in um, tests we have done. And that's it for my presentation. So I'm happy to hear um, questions. That's fine. I have a question. Um, I asked a whole bunch in chat, but I'll try and kind of boil it down to one sensible one. You know, we're talking about Elemental building the OS from a Docker file, but like you said, you know, it's derived from Slim Micro from, uh, yeah, Slim Micro for Rancher. Like, Slim Micro for Rancher only exists for Elemental, right? Right. So then okay. why the double work? Why have have an 81 package Sleep Micro for Rancher built in Kiwi, which, for example, it has to include Zipper because it needs to include Zipper so you can build it this way with your Docker file. If you built everything in Kiwi, you could get rid of all the Zipper stuff. You probably could get rid of Vim and you know a whole bunch of the partitioning stuff that you've got in there and all this extra junk that you have because of the, the extra work you've decided to do separately. We are very much looking forward to minimize the operating system and get rid of the zipper stack because we don't need it. But, but that's the only thing that your Docker file does. So what, how are you going to install Elemental if you're not using that? Um, just like we um, create all, all the other things, we, um, we have two um, of, um, container images, one with all the tooling and the other um, with just the data we we need. But how's that one with the tooling going to get there? Because right now you linked us that node image that we, saw, that we saw and that basically does nothing but install 11 packages with Zipper and a little bit of NRD stuff which you know could be thrown into a config sh with Kiwi. So I'm, I'm just trying to get like why the why the extra work? Why the why is Elemental something discreet from just doing this right in Sleep Micro for Rancher first? Um, yeah, that is uh, out of the um, initial problems, so to speak, we had with bridging the gap between the Linux group and the Rancher group, and uh, that is kind of the boundary. Uh, we decided on. So everything that is Slee Micro for Rancher is coming from Slee Micro is maintained by the Linux group. And everything that we add on top is um, owned and maintained by the Rancher side. Um, at the end of the day, um, our goal is to have it all in IBS and uh, also ship it via registry through the com. And then we don't care if it's built by Kiwi or built by Docker, because um, the end result um, from our perspective is identical. OK, then one last question. How do you stop somebody in, you know, you, you said this is all meant to be container images rather than RPMs, which is cool. I like that idea. But your container image still includes zipper and registry configuration. Like how, how are you stopping that from being run maliciously or otherwise? We don't, we don't, we don't care. I mean, but then it... how do you know that the elemental nodes you've got actually deployed match the, the state you've declared them to be. Because we have everything um, signed. We have a software bill of material um, that we can check against.
Andreas. Hi Klaus, I didn't quite get um, the road to SLE irrelevance. So could you say a bit more, because it, it seems that essentially you're building on SLE packages mm -hmm. um, and basically inheriting SLE properties like, well, various security certifications um, via that way. Um, yes. So um, I, does this mean basically that you see SLE as irrelevant because ELP is coming up and consider that this is a publicly talk potentially? Um, can you say whether you have been in contact with the relevant ELP stakeholders for potentially integrating some of these elemental ideas in the next generation product? Yes, of course I have. Um, but the ir irrelevance is coming from that um, customers care for their applications and the uptime of their of, of the services that are running on on kubernetes um, and they don't care what kind of distribution or kernel is is running uh, below um, you some uh, call it distro less um, because it doesn't matter um, Yes, for for the sales cycle um, and for uh, the uh, CSO of a customer, the security certifications are uh, Im important, but not for um, running up applications and um, the uptime of of applications and. Um, the Kubernetes or the, the Kubernetes operator or the ranger um, user um, just doesn't care if there is a SLE running on a cluster node or any, any other distribution.